Hello and welcome to Toneless Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And today uh, we're doing a study of uh, a painting called Golden Creek. This is a 5x7 uh, vertical uh, painting that I did very recently. And it's, uh, it's based on a scene, uh, it's based on a... Um, a photo I took uh, well, uh, uh, in a recent trip to England, um, kind of this sort of wetlandy, marshy area that uh, you know it caught my eye, and I decided to kind of do an interpretation um, of the scene, you know, where where it was really leaning on the yellows and the golden tones, and you'll see in the study that it's it's pretty golden, but. Uh, the larger image, the 11 by 14, we'll be doing next week is a lot more golden. And uh, I have to say, I'm pretty happy with both images. There, uh, they, there are some interesting differences, and um, that's always the way it is with the uh, study versus the larger one. Um, yeah. So this is recent stuff, and I always like to share recent stuff. Uh, although I have such a large archive. Uh, I really should endeavor to bring in some of the older ones as well. Maybe I'll do that after uh, we finish the, um, you know, the large version of this uh, scene next week. Anyway, um, how's it going in the studio? That's what you want to know. Well, yesterday was Saturday. My, uh, uh, well, today's Sunday, and actually I should let you know what day it is. Uh, Sunday, February 5th, okay, and... Um, yeah, as you know, I don't. Uh, I do this on Sundays, and I do my uh, chores around the house. And uh, the wife and I went out had a nice breakfast this morning. It was cool. Um, but yesterday, I was working on the last image in a series of five I'm doing. It was going to be six, but I kind of bagged the vertical image. I just didn't feel. wasn't feeling it. I felt like. Um, the image uh, in the painting, it had a, a, one of these big roads going up into the middle distance, but sometimes I feel when those are realized larger, it's like the road becomes just way too predominant, and I've got to think about it. Um, I am very happy with this as a vertical image, and actually, to tell you the truth, the larger version is not a 11 by 14, it's a 12 by 16. Uh, and 12 by 16 is just a little longer and skinnier than I usually like, but the, it worked for this image, it worked quite well, so I, I guess I'd probably ordered a few boards from my ply guy and uh, without realizing that I'd planned out uh, vertical uh, 12 by 16 so, and we're going to use that wood, I'm not going to let it uh, go to waste. Anyway, getting back into the studio yesterday, I was working on a um, 1622 of a, uh, it's kind of a meadow scene with some uh, trees off on the, uh, the right hand side and um, a very dusky kind of um, lavender toned sunset. There's a lot of lavender in it anyway. Sort of a play on um, lavender versus yellow. Um, this is something I like to do in paintings sometimes. And to tell you the truth, I, I like to get um, purple or lavender or violet, whatever you want to call it, into a lot of paintings in various ways because it's it's so complementary with all the other landscape colors. It looks not complementary in that it's um, in opposition, but complementary that it goes with um, the greens, it goes with the uh, um, the grays. And to tell you the truth, if I'm doing a lavender yellow, that is a truly complementary color scheme because yellow is the complement to violet. And uh, so. Um, there's probably a decent amount of purple in this one as well, to be honest. Uh, it just, you know, it's, it, when I'm looking at something being just a regular straight up gray uh, versus uh, injecting some color, I like to inject sometimes some violet or purple or sometimes some um, alizarin crimson or uh, there's a lot of things I'll throw into the grays actually. Um, uh, Burn Sienna. Um, or if I really want to, I've got this uh, perline red that I use, which is a kind of bright red. It's probably the least used color on my palette, but it, it's there just for these uh, skies and clouds and things like that. Um, anyway, working on the 1622 and uh, 
boy, I tell you, uh, when I step up to that, that larger size, for me, 1622 is almost as big as I go. I I do have some 1824 uh, boards prepared, and um, I, I've, I've had some success with the 1824s, and I've also crashed and burned. It's been 50-50, so I think I've got a bit of a, uh, a complex on it. Um, I've had more success at the 1622 range, and uh, I'm plugging away at this painting, and... Uh, one thing I always forget is it takes just so much longer for me to physically paint these larger paintings and uh, I can't say I love that I I, I about the time I'm kind of uh, running out of steam um, I still got a third of the painting to go and I kind of feel like I'm kind of slogging sometimes and uh, but you know whatever um, the fact of the matter is, is there were was a time when my first color pass was was just really that it was just a, a block in of color, and I didn't worry about a lot of technique and things. I would go in in the second and and, and do more and more. Um, but uh, what I've uh, learned quite a while back now is that you're better off setting on setting out to make that painting interesting and complete at every stage of its uh, progress, and that's. Um, one way that I teach and of course uh, there could be a lot of different other approaches that will work for a lot of different other people but for me that works well and um, that's what I do so I do inject some joie de vie you know some um, some interest into that first uh, color pass as opposed to just doing you know a simple blocking of colors with uh, and by blocking I mean I might not worry as much about color modulation the main thing that I'm doing a lot of the time is modulating colors from one tone into the next um, I always try to avoid uh, large expanses of just one color as easy as that would make uh, my life to just kind of fill it in with uh, one solid color color modulation is pretty critical uh, to creating an interesting painting uh, in my view, anyway, and um, <clears throat> color modulation is one of these uh, in areas like uh, where intuition comes into play. You know, you're you're painting along, and that color may or may not even be in the reference, or it might be something triggering you. But you go, oh, I should push this into a bit of a violet here, or a bit of a crimson here, or a bit of a this, a bit of a that. Maybe I'll bring some tones into my. Um, my browns as well you know uh, whatever I'm trying to always trying to create interest and I well I love that word modulation and color modulation is a big part of what I do um, which of course is a lot easier to do in a little study like this and one of the reasons I love the little studies is they're so much easier to paint you know uh, they're um, they're easier to paint however I can't really express um, any real detail and there's a lot of other things I can't really do because that's small size so I do enjoy doing the larger ones as well but uh, I'll always dig the uh, immediacy I get with a 5x7 uh, study and I will say in this uh, 1622 I pretty much did what I said I was going to where I did the underpainting stage uh, using just my 5x7 study as reference uh, so I'm getting the composition and the uh, proportions of, of most of the items in the scene off of that and I did um, load up the photographic reference while doing my painting and um, I'm glad I did you know I do I do have that uh, study off to the side and uh, but I find that I'm either while I'm painting I'm either following the study or I'm following the photo reference I really don't like to do both there are times when I will do both and that is if there's like some odd things in the reference that I know just won't work the way they are in the photograph I've got to um, use my uh, artistic license to change things up um, and this is a case where having that study is invaluable because I've already solved the problem there one time and uh, I'm just going to solve it larger. And you know when you're talking about painting larger, you're, you know in the digital realm we have a concept called resolution. So you have a, a low res image that say might be 200 by 300 pixels and um, as long as you're far enough away from it, uh, like it's an icon or something, uh, you know it looks like a decent image but if you try and zoom in and look at any detail there won't be enough 
pixels there to give you any real detail and it's sort of the same thing with the painting when I move up to a larger size I've got more room um, I can use uh, uh, smaller brush strokes in a larger space which uh, gives us more detail and uh, that's a double-edged sword as I've talked about a lot that the uh, excessive detail can kill a paint painting um, whereas uh, not quite enough detail isn't my uh, you know, isn't my style, isn't what I like to do. I like a, a happy medium. I did ask someone in my studio the other day looking at, you know, one of my my first color passes and uh, saying, oh, I really like that, you know, and the, one of the reasons is is that you know, it really looks like where a lot of people stop these days. They just start with, stop with this kind of loose, looser, block any approach and um, I just don't feel like I'm done. And uh, if I don't feel like I'm done, I'm not done. Uh, so um, I told them, well, that's nice you like it, but I'm going to finish it. I'm taking it further. However, uh, like I've uh, talked to you guys before, um, you know, I'm trying to keep myself to just two color passes now, not three, or in the past I've got to do even four and five. You just keep going over it and over it. And, you know, the problem with that is it really doesn't get a whole lot better after that second color pass. So anyway, you can see we're getting close to the end. Thanks for joining us today. Um, you can go to my website, it's landscapepainter.co.nz, there's some paintings of mine there, uh, it's fairly up to date, kind of up to date, updated the images there about two months ago, uh, you can also follow the blog there, and, um, we're going to be back, uh, next week, uh, with the larger version of this image, Golden Creek, so, meanwhile, uh, take good care, and stay out of trouble. <laughs>